So we'll keep working with the door, and then we're going to look at bump mapping. Select the door, then select texture, add image, and new. From file, we want to pick the flames. I'm going to leave this open for a few seconds. Now I want to remove the texture in my ambient and the few shading, but I still want them to affect the bump mapping. When we enable bump mapping, we don't see anything on the door. Now with the right mouse button, we have to enable bump. As you can see, we need to tell the program to add this image to the layer. Now we can see the bump being applied. I want a little bit of diffuse just to get a little bit of color. We're going to assign this texture to the weight map because I might want only the flames and just a little bit of texture in the back this black texture. With the door selected, go to Property, Weight Map, and rename the file Flames. Now we connect the Flames Weight Map. Now with the flames weight map selected, I'm going to paint with a big brush. Press W to paint, but first use Control W to set the opacity at 50% or less. We'll just brush it generally here. There you go. Now let's get a little bit closer. Now what I'm going to do is remove the black borders, this black color. With the right mouse button, we start removing the black color where we don't want borders. Maybe a little bit more on this red thing, but a little less on this side. We can recover the texture we have on the back. It's solid textures here, and we don't want that much texture right here. I want some texture on the edges. Now let's go back to Text Layer Editor, where we'll add a little ambient and a little bit more diffuse. So we switch our anti-alias setting back to Maximum we're going to start seeing all this really nice bumping detail added to the texture. My computer is going a little bit slow because it's capturing video as I work, but your computer should be faster. So we're going to add a little bit more color in the flame area. So switch back to your angles to low quality, and let's add more diffuse. Something like that. Now let's start removing the black. Select the flames and right click the right mouse button and start removing the flames, or we don't want the black color. There you go. That's pretty good. A little bit less, and that's that'll do it. Remember to save. So we're going to add a little bit to the rust circles, and we're going to dent the door slightly as if somebody had kicked it. The first thing to do is to go to Shaded. There, we'll use M to move points, proportional, and R for radius. 
And we're going to start pushing the door a little bit, pushing the points a little, just a bit. Now just to make some small dents. That's pretty good, just like that. Now we can use the right mouse button or adjust our fall off and make it a little bit more linear. Once again, M to move, proportional, and adjust the radius. You can use either the R key or the middle mouse button to adjust the radius. Now that's pretty good. It looks like somebody kicked the door. That's cool. Now let's see how it looks when it's textured. It looks pretty rough, so we're going to fix it a little bit. What we have to do is lower our anti-alias and select the area we want by dragging our selection box around these points. Go to Model, then Deformation, and Smooth. We're going to enable the Render Region again to check our values, and then we'll start adding some smooth values until we more or less get what we want. And that makes it a little bit better. Now, we still have some of the dents there, so, well, that's pretty good. Let's add some more rust. We go to Red Rust. So the next process is to extract all the color bump mapping and dents from this door and pass on that information to our low polygon door. And then we can continue.